to Sister Trotter and to all of my brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank God <coughs> for another opportunity of being here. So we're going to go to 1 Samuel, uh, the third chapter, and first through the 10th verse. Feel like Elvis Presley right now. I got this right leg shaking. <laughs> but I'll, I'll be all right. <laughs> and the word of God says, Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at that time while Eli was laying down in his place. And when his eyes had become, began to grow uh, so dim that he could not see. And before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was lying down, that the Lord called Samuel, he answered, here I am. So he ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. And he said, I did not call. Lie down again. And he went and laid down. Then the Lord called yet again. So Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. He answered, I did not call. My son, lay down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, so he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore Eli said, Samuel, go lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you may say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in this place. Now the Lord came and stood and called as other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, speak for your servant hears. Uh, for today, we will use the topic, can you hear God calling? Amen. Let us let us pray. Heavenly Father, it's once again that we have come before your presence, not only with thanksgiving on our hearts, God, but just to be able to assemble together with faithful believers and right-minded believers. And we thank you for this opportunity. We pray, God, that you will bless this word, Heavenly Father. Decrease in me that the, that the spirit of God will increase. Let those things only be said that you want said. Thank you, God, for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. When we look at this text, we are dealing with the book of Samuel, appropriately named after our character. Samuel was written to record the history of Israel under judges mm -hmm. to show the change in government of Israel from a system of judges to a system of kings. The book of Samuel speaks in a prophetic tone of warning to those that found themselves in a religious low point. The beginning of Samuel starts with a man who has two wives, Hannah and Panana. Panana provided children for Elkanah. Hannah had no children. She was barren. And during this time, women unable to bear was marked and ridiculed. Bible says that she was severely provoked and she was made to feel miserable. She was made to feel low, less than nothing. She was mocked on the outside of the church. But the Bible says that even inside of the temple, the house of God, she was mocked. It's a sad day when you feel the need to put a person down, make them feel low, harass or bully in the church of God. She was distressed, but she never gave up. The Bible said that one day she prayed. In the midst of our journey, our ups and downs, we have to learn to pray in spite of. Does anybody know what prayer can do? 
she prayed. And during her prayer, she told the Lord that if you would bless me with a child, that I would give that child right back to you. Could it be, could it be that the problems that we're facing with some of our youth today is that some parents have not kept their promise? But in chapter 1, 19 through 21, God blesses her. The rest of the chapter, she keeps her promise. After Samuel was weaned, she presented him to the man of God. Question, who are we introducing our children to? In the first part of the chapter, in chapter 2, she blesses the Lord for making a way. He's a provider, Jehovah Jireh. She blesses the Lord for making a way out of no way. Yes, the first 11 verses of chapter 2, she praises God. But now we are here at chapter 3. As a parent who kept her promise to God, she brought him, Samuel, to the temple to serve. Child translated in the Hebrew could be from the age of an infant to an adolescence. Scripture states in verse 1 of chapter 3, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. When looking at this, it's great to point out that even at the tender age of a young child, God has something for them to do. When we look at the word minister as in ministering to the Lord, the word minister means to serve and to be an attendant. So while Samuel was in the presence of Eli or in the attendant, the Bible says he ministered. He wasn't just there to be counted. While he was in the house, literally Samuel was doing what he was supposed to do. Oftentimes when we come into the house, we have to remind ourselves that we aren't just here to be attendants. But we are here to serve. Also, the word of the Lord, also the word ministering can literally be translated to me one that contributes. Samuel was not only in the house serving, but while he was in attendance, the Bible says that he was not only serving, but he was contributing. And we have to understand that our children have all been called to a specific purpose. Samuel was called to a specific purpose. Therefore, as adults, we must recognize that our child or children have special talents and gifts to contribute to the body of Christ. Can I get amen? amen. So you, you, you see, we are not entrusting them to maintain, to invent, to build up, to encourage, and to inspire. But here in the text, we see that Eli has entrusted Samuel with something to do. And Samuel is fulfilling his duties. Samuel was serving during the time when there was a low period. Oftentimes when there is a low period, people typically stop working. But Samuel continued to work. Didn't matter his age. Samuel understood his duties. And what I'm trying to get the youth here to understand. That even in low periods when nobody is watching, if God has given you an assignment, you are to complete that assignment. Whether it was opening the doors or closing the doors of the temple, Samuel worked. So now we have Eli, the high priest, and Samuel, the worker. Verse 2 says, it came to pass that time when Eli was laid down and his eyes had become waxed dim as he was going blind. Eli had progressed to an old age, and being able to see had become a challenge. Scripture says he laid down in his place. The scripture indicates that the man with the troubled vision had a place to lay his head. This also indicates that there were living quarters built in connection with the temple or the tabernacle for the high priests and others who were immediately employed in the tabernacle. Which means not only did Eli have a place to lay his head, 
but those who contributed to the upkeep of the tabernacle had a place to rest as well. Now, while Samuel lay, something happens. God calls Samuel's name. Now, there's three things that we should pay attention to here as God calls Samuel's name. The first thing that we should pay attention to is that Samuel heard his name. The next thing we should pay attention to is that he sought out the source. And then the next thing is that he followed wise instruction. So let's look at him hearing his name. And I don't know about you. I don't, don't know what happened in your household. But for me as a kid, it took me less than 10 seconds to respond when my mother called my name. Now, I don't know how long it took you, but I understood the characteristics of Diane Williams. So I knew that when my name was called, I had to get up and move. I can't recall a time that my mother called my name and me just sitting there acting like I ain't heard nothing. Now, I don't know about you, but I knew the characteristics of Diane Williams. As a matter of fact, I had three names to respond. I had Ken. I had Kenny, and I had Kenneth Sebastian Williams. Now, you know when you hear all three, something's wrong. Now, Ken meant everything was good. It's going to be a good day. I don't see any whoopings on the horizon. No punishments popping up. Mom haven't received any calls from the teacher. Yes, when I heard Ken, I knew, like Ice Cube said, it was a good day. <laughs> now, Kenny, on the other hand, meant things were a little shaky. Maybe I needed to clean my room or get some stuff off the floor. Maybe there are some dirty dishes left somewhere. Nothing too severe. Maybe some dark clouds are starting to move in. But I believe that with God's help, I would make it through. But then there was Kenneth Sebastian Williams. Now, when Kenneth Sebastian Williams was called, it meant my time here on earth was questionable. It's time for me to call everybody and let them know it was good knowing them. But back then, you always put yourself in a position to hear when your parents called. Because I would always hear, I brought you into this world, and I will. Yeah, somebody know what I'm talking about. But I, relearn, I learned to respond to these names because it was expected of me to answer. It was considered disrespectful when you didn't answer when your parents called. There should not have been a two or a three or a four times. The first time your parents call your name, you should have been able to answer. You should always put yourself in the position where you can hear. Couldn't close no doors in my mother's house. It was a show of disrespect. Samuel hears his name. He's attentive. He has some good home training. And he was sensitive to the needs of Eli. And even though he was asleep, because of Eli's condition, he made sure that he would be available to assist when needed. So he responded, here I am. He is comforting Eli by saying, I'm on my way. Samuel might have felt that not only was he sensitive to his duties, but Eli was almost blind and he wanted to make sure he was there for him. Children, it is important that you stay connected to your name. Samuel responded to his name being called. And I've come to find that in my years of teaching that in dealing with you that a lot of times when the kids don't answer it's because they've been called some everything up under the, the sun that they forget their real name. It's sad because they begin to detach themselves from little Jimmy or little Johnny and 
they begin to take on what they've been called by other people. It might not be necessarily inside of the house, but even on the outside, somebody has made a profound impact on them that they stop listening because they can't recognize their name. Children, it's important that you stay connected to your name. People in the world may call you any and everything in the dictionary, but stay connected to God. Samuel was his name, and to Samuel he only answered to. Now let us go that let us go to the next point where he sought out the source. The Bible says that after hearing his name, Samuel rose seeking out. Scripture one said he ministered to the Lord. Verse 7 says, Samuel did not know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. Samuel had never experienced God in this way. He never experienced the voice of God calling his name. Never experienced this type of communication. Therefore, he is not looking to God. He is looking to Eli as the source of his name being called. But the important fact is that Samuel is getting up seeking. We have to train our children to seek out God when God is calling their name. But young people, you have a responsibility as well to this process. Sometimes, sometimes you may just have to put down the cell phones. Stop holding your phones hostage like there are some top secrets on those phones. Y'all got some top secrets on y'all phones? They say I'm telling on them now. You have to give your fingers a rest. Get off of Snapchat, Instagram, WeChat, Twitter. You will have to get Drake and Little Ma and 21 Savage and Migos and Meek Mill and Swali or Sway Lee and Kodak Black. Look at these names, now. Two, two chains, two chains, and sky mask, the slump god, and a boogie with the hoodie. You have to get these rappers out of your ear and give God a chance to connect with you. Samuel had nothing distracting them. He had nothing distracting him. So when he heard his name, he responded. When God calls you by your name, that means God has a plan for you. But if you got everything in your ear going on, you can't hear God. When he calls, find out what the plan is. Find out what he wants you to do. Now understand there's three voices that speak to you. You speak to yourself. The devil speaks to you. And God speaks to you. When God speaks his word, and when you hear God, it's not outside of his will. God speaks his word, and it's aligned with his will. God won't have you do anything outside of his will. Now, the enemy, he will lie, he will distract, he will derail, he will put you in a position where you're even going up against your own family. Your foresight would seem as if everybody in the world is against you. And that's all due to the lies that Satan put in your head. Your own voice will even confuse you. It's a funny thing that just happened to me. I was at Walmart and I had got the assignment to preach and I was just praying and walking around Walmart praying. And next thing you know, I get a text from Reverend McCoy. He said, Rev, next time when you walk past me, speak instead of just sitting there talking to yourself. I told him, I said, well, I was praying. He said, well, let's stick to that story then. (laughs) So God knows your name. Seek him out when he calls. Now, the next step is follow wise instructions. After three times of hearing his name, name, he finally received direction and instruction. Evidently, God has spoken to Eli in a similar fashion. So he was able again 
at that time to see that God was seeking to make himself known to Samuel. And again, even though Samuel ministered to the Lord by serving and contributing, he had never experienced God like this. So the one that knows God, have communicated with God, recognizes that it is God, calling his name, gives instructions to Samuel. Now back to the parents and teachers and preachers and leaders. We have a responsibility to our kids. It's important that we stay connected to the word of God. Keep God as the head of our lives. We never know when one of these back here or out there will come asking for wisdom and instruction. And just like Samuel and for the kids that are experiencing God and they don't know what is going on on the inside of them, they are saying, I'm hearing my name, somebody's calling me, I'm feeling something, something's going on the inside, but I can't explain it. Can you help me? But unfortunately for some, our children are standing there by themselves with nobody to respond. For some of our children, there are nobody in place. Mother and father caught up with some new person in their life. Fathers have left the house. Kids left with ungodly people. So they have no one to seek out. Our young people are being called and there's no one around them to give them guidance. And because there's no one to give them guidance or instructions, they turn to drugs and so many other things and bullying and stealing and gangs and our young ladies end up in abusive relationships and our young men think it's okay to hit women and, and all of these other things are going on because nobody is in place to give them sound wisdom. So there's five things that happens when nobody's in place. The children begin to ignore their call. They find pleasure somewhere else. They find a whole new identity. That's why we say, I don't even recognize you anymore. They pick up bad habits. They become lost. It's human nature for a child to look at their parents for guidance. But if a parent is constantly criticizing that child, Putting that child down. That child is going to suffer. But scripture states that not only did Samuel have someone to turn to, he also received sound wisdom and instruction. Eli says, lay down. And it shall be if he call thee, thou shalt say, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. And Samuel goes, lie down, and he hears his name, and he responds as Eli has instructed. That's why young people need to adhere to the instructions of the wise. We've been there. We've done that. We all can tell you about the things that we've done in our past. We haven't always worn a suit. We haven't always worn a church hat. We've been places that we don't want you to go. But today I say to the youth, love the Lord with all your heart. Seek him while he may be found. God has a plan for you. God wants to use you. Remember, we all make mistakes, but don't let your mistakes define who you are. Learn from your mistakes. Listen to your parents and your guardians. Listen to those who care. We've been there. We've done that. So now as I close, I ask a question. Do I have any youth? Do I have any youth? Do I have any youth that will answer when God calls? I have another question. Do I have any youth that is ready to seek God? I have another question. Do I have any youth ready to fight the good fight of faith? I have another question. Do I have anybody ready to receive sound wisdom and instruction? Do I have any youth ready to serve in good times and bad?
Do I have any youth that love the Lord? If I have any youth that love the Lord, stand up on your feet and give God some praise like you at a concert. If you love the Lord, wave your hand. To all of the youth in the church that love the Lord. Just as well as you love God, you have to understand that he also loves you. And that's why over 2,000 years ago, he sent down his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But he got up on that third day with all power in his hand that you may serve him, that you may hear him when he calls. God bless you. Thank you, Reverend William. The word of God has been preached. The word of God has been proclaimed. The challenge has been issued. Now it's time to respond. There may be one.